I think what is much more important than the current virus numbers is actually what is going to happen on the whole vaccine discussion. So when will it come? How much will that solve the problem? How much immunity will you get in people? These kind of things. How effective will it be? That, I think, is much more the key for markets because the market will understand that if you have a little bit of a spread of the virus even more, you will lock down. You will have regional lockdowns, targeted lockdowns, but you will not have a whole lockdown of the country. So it doesn't really matter too much from, you can say, more medium-term growth perspectives. And that's why I think the whole vaccine development is much more important. And, and of course, happening in parallel with the, the virus developments, we're seeing the U.S. and China continue to battle it out. And we've seen an escalation on the tech front in terms of tensions between Beijing and Washington, with Washington moving ahead with the ban on TikTok. TikTok, just for example, why haven't markets reacted to these new tensions the same way they did to uh, trade tensions over the last two years or so, which caused major disruptions to markets? I think it is because the market is saying, yes, we have a long term Cold War, technological war between US and China, uh, but you don't have the risk of an escalation, very sharp escalation of the trade war, which will be very damaging for the global economy right now. That is probably lower. Um, and I think that's why the market is saying th these other things are very, very long term. They are definitely a bad thing for the global economy, but we can't really factor in now. So the trade war, and I don't think that's going to, I would, I, 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 my base case is not that we have a sharp escalation of the trade side. And therefore, I don't think this is a key market theme, at least for the next couple of months. Uh, Thomas, can I just take you back to your comment about valuation? Because I, I find that intriguing at this point. Because I think you're absolutely right. On a relative basis, uh, the valuations to where we are on the fixed income don't look demanding. The question is on an absolute uh, basis, they do. And, and let me just pick a bone with you here. The S&P, what, is now something like, I don't know, 29 times trailing. On that basis, what is the risk to your um, rosier scenario going forward? Is there the potential that we actually see something like a reversion to, to the mean on an absolute basis, which means that inevitably you lose money uh, running into 2021? I think the, big, the biggest risk I can think of is that if, you, if, you, if we found out that it's very difficult to solve the crisis with the vaccine, that will be extremely damaging for S&P because that has been, I mean, the, the, the rally we have seen has to a large extent been driven by that. Then I would say that the, the tail risk which is out there, which is outside the vaccine, of course related to that, is a very sudden spike in inflation. Because let's say you've had inflation going up to 3%, all interest rate curves are going to rise very sharply. The discounted how much future earnings from, let's say, tech stocks, that's going to be priced very differently. So that nobody is expecting a lot of inflation. But if that happened, you will see equity selling off very dramatically into next year.